Hey everybody, welcome back to another video lesson. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and focus on stoichiometry and I'm going to pay particular attention to two things. One thing that I call BCA tables and the other thing is something known as the limiting reactants. Okay, um, so first of all let's take a look at the equation that we have here. So remember balanced equations give us some information about how the elements react together to produce the various products. So in this case nitrogen reacting with hydrogen to form ammonia. For every one mole of nitrogen that I have, I produce three moles, or I'm sorry, I react with three moles of hydrogen to produce two moles of ammonia. So remember, the balanced equation shows us the ratio at which these things interact with each other to form the products. So every time I have one of these, I need three of the hydrogens. And every time I have that ratio, I always produce two moles of the ammonia as a product. So let's take a look at the little comparison I have here because I have a little bit of a mistake. So let's see if we can take a look. So according to the balance equation, for every four moles of nitrogen, we need six moles of hydrogen. Well, it's not really true because if I have four of these, right, for every one, I need three. So every time I have one, there's three, so four times three, this should actually be 12 moles of hydrogen. For every four moles of nitrogen that are reacted, I'm going to produce not four moles of hydrogen of ammonia, but eight moles of ammonia. So therefore we can kind of make a little bit of correction there. So again, it, every time we change the number of, of moles, as long as these stay in the ratio, we can use the balance equation to kind of figure things out. Now, the way we're going to organize the work is with what I call is, is what I use is something called the BCA table. What the BCA table does is it organizes the work before and after the reaction happens. So that's what I'm referring to. So this is before the reaction takes place. This is the change. Um, so this is as the chemical reaction is taking place. And then this is the outcome of it. Because a lot of students think that this is the before. They think, oh, the reactants are what we had before, and the products are what we have as the after. And that's not really always true. So what I want you to think of is this is what happens before the reaction, and this is what's going to happen after the reaction. Because there's going to be a few surprises along the way if you're not careful. Um, the feet, I know it looks like this when we started doing these calculations, everybody's like, oh, these charts, these charts. I, I get it, but they really do organize the work, especially when we get to more challenging problems a little bit later. So let's take a look at how we put it to practice and how we use it. Okay, so let's say we're looking for how many moles of ammonia. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the moles of ammonia in this problem. That's my goal. Okay, That would be formed. Now when is the ammonia formed? It's formed after the reaction. So really I'm going to be looking for this right here. This is what I'm going to be looking for as my answer. Okay, um, Because I want to figure out how many moles of the ammonia are formed when, the, when we have four moles of hydrogen. So if I have four moles of hydrogen okay, in the reaction, how many moles of this um, are going to be formed when we react completely with the nitrogen. Now when we say completely, that means that we want this to go to zero. We want it to react completely and go away. All right, so we want so that means that we're putting enough nitrogen in here to react with all of this hydrogen completely. Now, for the reaction here, we don't really care about the nitrogen in this particular problem because we're just focusing on those, these two. Now, before the reaction takes place, how much ammonia did we have? We didn't have anything because we haven't made the ammonia yet because we haven't done the reaction. Now here's the part that everybody gets a little confused on in the beginning is the change. The change is the reaction that's going on and it's going to be based on the coefficients in the balanced equation. So for every one of these that reacts, I put the minus sign because this is getting used up, right? It's being depleted and going down in value. Same thing with this one, but it's going down at three times the rate at which this one does. And over here, this is going to go up by 2x. Okay, So therefore, this will increase at a rate of 2 to every time one of these goes down, or this 3 to 2 or 2 to 3 ratio between the hydrogen and the ammonia. So again, I'm looking for the ammonia. Now, there's two ways you can solve this at this point. Okay, And this is kind of why I'm showing you the chart, because it kind of organizes your work and kind of shows you where everything is going. So I'm starting with the four moles of hydrogen, and I want to get to the moles of ammonia. Well, I could go back to my traditional stoichiometry, uh, not stoichiometry, but my dimensional analysis of moles of hydrogen and I would go back to the co to the uh, conversion factor and I would say okay there's three moles of hydrogen for every two moles of ammonia that are formed. So what I can do is I can figure out okay well four times uh, two divided by three 
we end up with 2.667 or just 2. Point, um, well, in this case, it's only one significant figure, so roughly 3 moles of ammonia are going to form based on the significant figures in that particular question. Okay, So that's one way to figure it out. And the other way that I could do this is I could use this little calculation here, and I could say, hey, look at 4 moles of of the the hydrogen are going to be used up 3x equals 0 so what I can do is I can use this algebra here 4 minus 3x and I can solve for x right so 3x is equal to uh, minus 3x and so we got minus 4 so we divide by the minus 3 divide by the minus 3 x this will give me my value of x so if we just do 4 divided by 3, we can see that x is actually 1.333. Okay, now why would I want to know that? Well, because if I know what x is, I can just say, oh, this is going to be 2x. So then I could just do 2x and say that it's 2 times 1.333, and then I can figure out what this value would be, which of course, when we multiply that out, it comes out to be uh, 1.333 times Two gives me the 2.66 number again, so 2.667 moles of ammonia. So just showing you again how the relationship of these play out. Now in this particular question, did you really need to do all this? Probably not, but again, I'm just trying to use this as a, a simple problem to show you the, back, the, the background information for the more complicated problems. Okay, here in this example what we have is we're looking for the mass of hydrogen that would be needed to form 32.1 grams of ammonia. So that's where I'm going to start. We're going to start with first looking for, you know, identifying the un, the, what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for grams of hydrogen. Now it's important that I focus on this because in this problem here I'm moving to the masses. And this is a more realistic way to do this because we can't really measure the moles. We can definitely measure the mass. So we start with that. And they tell me that I have 32... 32 grams of 32.1 grams of the ammonia. So I'm going to put that above here just to kind of organize my work. Now, keep in mind the way this problem is structured. They want to know how many grams of hydrogen would be needed to form this. So when will the ammonia be formed? Remember, it's going to be formed after the reaction happens. Because remember, this starts off as zero moles. I don't have any ammonia in the beginning. So what I'm looking for is not the products. I'm not looking for something in the after. I'm actually looking for something in the before. I want to know how much hydrogen do I need to have in order to make this quantity of, of ammonia. So keep in mind, I'm not always going to be looking for products or things in the after part. and might be looking for things in the beginning. So that's why I like the charts. The charts kind of help me to kind of think through that and see, see what's going on. So if I put 32.1 grams of ammonia. That's what I'm starting with. Now the other important thing we need to focus on is that these balance equations are only based on the number of moles. Well, I shouldn't say only because we know that they're based on molecules and other things, but the most important thing we want to focus on is that they are based on the moles. So this would be the moles of nitrogen to the moles of hydrogen to two moles of ammonia. It definitely does not ever equate to the masses. This would not be one gram of nitrogen to three grams of hydrogen to two grams of ammonia. So keep that in mind. We can never, ever, ever use masses in these uh, BCA charts. You always want to be using your moles in these charts. So what I want to do is get rid of the mass is my point. Okay, we're going to do this quite a bit. And this is one of the secrets to these problems is that um, whatever information I give you, you're just going to convert to moles. And it will be the same thing every time we do stoichiometry. All right, so I'm going to do the calculation here. All right, so I end up with 1.888. Now I'm just using the conversion with the molar mass to get the moles of ammonia. That's the number of moles that are going to go into this portion right here, because this is how many moles of the ammonia that I need to make. Well, if I'm going to make that, I'm going to make it by producing two moles. And here's the thing. Let me stop there for a second. This is how many moles that I'm actually going to have, which is a little bit less than two moles. The two here is just a ratio. That does not mean that that's how much I have in these reactions. So keep that in mind that the changes are not necessarily how much you have. Okay. So if this is how many moles of the ammonia that I need to have and produce, how many moles of the hydrogen do I need to make? Well, let's think about this a little bit more here. Um, when we're looking at these equations, all right, something always has to run out to make these products, right? Otherwise, if they, it didn't run out, if one of the reactants didn't stop reacting, 
then I could just make unlimited amounts of ammonia, and that's just not possible. So I will always want my uh, reactants to run out to zero, or at least one of them to run out to zero, so that they uh, no longer are there. So the hydrogen is going to start at some number, and it's going to go down by 3x. Now if we take a look at the nitrogen, the nitrogen is not being used, and here's why. Because we're assuming that this is what's called the excess reactant. What that means is that there's so much reactant in here that there will be some left over when we're finished and it would be in excessive amounts. Okay, so that's why we would call that the excess. And I kind of abbreviate that with an X S at times. Okay. Alright. So how much hydrogen? Well we're going to use this 1.88 because we know that every time we make two moles of ammonia we produce uh, or we lose three moles of hydrogen. So what was this in the beginning? So we do 1.888 moles of ammonia, and we just use that stoichiometry uh, from the valence equation. So we just use that ratio. So we put down here uh, moles of the ammonia, and we put up here the moles of hydrogen. And if I look at the ratio, it's a 3 to 2 ratio, and that will give me the number of moles equal to 2.827 moles of hydrogen okay and to finish this off because remember I don't want the moles right that's, that's the number it's gonna go here is 2.827 moles I don't want the moles here what I want is my final answer to be in grams this is why this is important to throw this over here so you don't forget that your final answer should be in grams 5.71 grams of hydrogen so that would be my final mass of hydrogen that's needed. Okay? All right, real quick, let's just recap this really fast. Remember what I started with mass, I used the molar mass to find the moles of ammonia. From there, I then used the balanced equation to find the ratio between. Now keep in mind whenever we're switching from one substance to another from ammonia to hydrogen, we're going to be using the balanced equation. So that's how we can convert from substance to substance. We're going from column to column. And then I final I finished this up by using the molar mass of hydrogen to get the mass of the H2. Okay, uh, one other way you could do this, and I'm not going to do it fully, but I'm just going to show you the little background and one, one of the reasons why I like this table. Again, uh, I'm going to use this. Instead of doing the, the stoichiometry and stuff like I did here, I could actually use just this right here because I know that if I start off with 0 and I end up with 1.888, I can actually solve for x. And that's why I like setting up this table like this because I would take 0 plus 2x equals 1.8. 8, 8. What that allows me to do is it allows me to actually solve for x, and when I solve for x, I'm going to end up finding that it actually will come out to be 0.944 moles. So that's the value of x. So anywhere in this change part, I could actually solve for the x. So in this case, I would put in here 3x because I want to see what the change is over here. So I can actually solve for 3x. 3x is equal to 3 times 0.944 moles equals, I've never drawn my fours like that, that was just a weird thing that happened with the computer here, uh, ends up being 2.827 moles. So that's another way to find your moles of hydrogen rather than using the stoichiometry. Uh, and there's other ways of doing these things too, so if you find some other stuff that'd be cool. Okay. Uh, so we're going to stop here. Uh, in the next video lesson, I'll go through what's called limiting reactant, and that'll be like putting all of this stuff together. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Talk to you later.